vegan breastfeeding experiment and the health and development of children is the most important thing to me and it's very close to my heart as uh, my sister personally is mentally disabled and I believe uh, that that has a lot to do with modern problems like that that a lot of people have. In this video, we're going to go over why nutrients in the diet, especially of nursing women, are important. And we're going to start with the fact that every indigenous group fed these nursing women, these couples trying to conceive special foods, and they went out of their way to get these foods to feed. All of these foods contain very high amounts of fat-soluble vitamins in their animal form. Uh, you know, coastal tribes, for example, would always use fish eggs and fish eggs like salmon roe. Dr. Rhonda Patrick, salmon roe, hey, what's going on? Very high in DHA. They knew these foods were very nutritious. You know, some African tribes would feed their nursing woman fresh milk off of summer grass. They would always make sure special feeding regimens were implemented. And why this is so important is because these people were already on a diet primarily of animal foods, primarily 60 to 65% animal foods. So even those people consuming large amounts of animal foods needed to increase the fat-soluble vitamin content of their diet to have an ideal child in, this, in their sense. So when we remove all animal foods, we get drastic, drastic results. So when we remove all animal foods, it's safe to say we've gone very far from our indigenous past. And not only that, uh, I don't think there's any or at least many vegan women who have breastfed or have been able to breastfeed for as long as indigenous women. And even if they have, the breast milk is probably, uh, the vitamin concentration is minuscule. So we're just going to establish first that the vitamins in the mother's diet are important and the bioavailability of plant versus animal vitamins as well. Here we have a study showing that vitamin A converts at very low rates in humans and it requires a decent amount of fat to be converted. Not only that, some humans cannot convert carotenoids to vitamin A. Some people just can't convert it at all. And this is important because the form of vitamin A in plant foods is carotenoids. It is not vitamin A. The second study here goes over vitamin K and how vitamin K variation in foods does affect blood levels. But this study shows that you need to consume fat to absorb vitamin K. So again, we're seeing fat is needed to convert the plant version of vitamin K to the animal version, but where would we have gotten fat in nature in most climates? From animal foods, so isn't it kind of a moot point? Here's a study showing that breast milk DHA levels vary greatly in women from 0.05% to 0.73%. That is a huge variance, almost 20 fold, showing that DHA levels in breast milk are super important and then here's breast milk vitamin A as an indicator of vitamin A status of women and infants, showing that vitamin A levels in the mother's milk are very, are directly related to the vitamin A status of the infant. Here's a study showing the B vitamin levels vary throughout lactation periods. Here's another study showing that the vitamin concentrations in human milk vary with time, just showing that there is a big variance in all the vitamins and how they are all important. Uh, in the breast milk to the child. And this shows vitamin D levels and variations on uh, vitamin D levels in breast milk. And this study shows that infants can be vitamin K deficient. Guys, I'm kind of, it's safe to say plant forms of vitamins are not safe bets and that vitamin content in the breast milk is very important. I think we've established that. Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you everything that I eat in a day. So the first thing I'm gonna have is this Oatly Matcha Latte. I've never had this before, it's basically just oats and uh, some matcha tea powder. Just So oats are very, very high in certain anti-nutrients, uh, particularly phytic acid, lectins, and avenin, which is an inflammatory protein similar to wheat. Uh, not only would oat milk be super high in oxalates, this woman ends up putting it in just about everything. So. Oxalates are not mentioned here, but oats are very high in oxalates. Uh, the Weston Price Foundation does a write-up on how soaking oats for about a week at a, about 120 degrees can remove 98% of phytates, but you never see vegans doing that, and that still doesn't remove the other anti-nutrients. Every grain has an indigenous preparation, 
So ju just keep that in mind. You know, not, not only are we moving away from our indigenous past in regards to animal foods, we're also not preparing plant foods like we used to. Just really try to remember this oat milk, guys, because she puts this in, I believe, every single meal. It's super high in these anti-nutrients. And also, she mentioned she's trying to reduce gluten. So oats have some gluten in them, and they can be inflammatory in a similar way, yet she's dousing it on everything. It's like a small amount. And by the way, this is my parents. <laughs> They're visiting all the way from Norway. And my little brother is here as well. He's uh, just downstairs playing. But yeah, let me try this matcha latte. Mmm, not bad. Yeah, I've actually bad. never had this before. Have you mm. tried it before? No. It's nice. No? You don't like it? I prefer coffee. <laughs> Not bad, I this. I don't like coffee. All right, so we just got back from our walk a little while ago. Uh, come on, lady. Please. So I was trying to put now to sleep. He hasn't fallen asleep yet, so John's taking over. But now I'm gonna make my breakfast. It's actually almost lunchtime. So, yeah, I'm having quite a late breakfast today. But this is what I'm having. So I'm having some buckwheat. I just cooked this up in water. And then I'm gonna top it with... Um, so she has buckwheat there, just cooked in water, just carbs and inflammatory grains. She has a peach, which is just sugar and possibly a little bit of vitamin C. She has a date, more dr sugar, dried fruit. Then she's got coconut syrup, again, more sugar. And then tahini, which is just an inflammatory omega-6 fat. There's no nutrient content in this meal whatsoever. A peach, a date, some tahini, some coconut syrup. And then also some oat milk that I had here, but someone put it back in the... Can't forget the anti-nutrient bomb, baby. Cannot forget. Rich, yeah, here it is. And then some oatly oat milk as well. All right, so there you go. Looks super delicious. And this is such a great alternative to oats as well. Buckwheat is really nice. So if you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend that you do. It does have um, kind of like a different flavor, but I really like it. It might take a little while to get used to it, but it's super nice. And you can also have it with savory foods, but eating it like this as buckwheat cereal, super tasty. So Noah is actually four months old today, so we're gonna go out for lunch. We're gonna walk to the restaurant and have lunch. By the way, this is probably the warmest day in a long time. I know, so it's nice to be nice outside. Today. Yeah, it's very nice. That's why we also decided to walk to the restaurant. Second walk of the day. So it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be the second walk. But when you have weather like this, you just need to take advantage and be outdoors as much as possible. And also because of Noah, he loves to be outdoors. So I'm super excited to go have food at the restaurant. And John and I, we usually go there maybe once or twice a week for dinner or lunch, just because it's such a nice place. The food is amazing and we need to support the vegan restaurants in town that's very important as well um but yeah these last couple of weeks actually i've been uh changing my diet up a little bit uh, noah's had like some rashes on his back and his chest so i've been experimenting a little bit your baby has rashes on his back and chest and you're experimenting a little bit guys I, like, even if I had my wife on what I thought was the perfect indigenous diet, I would 100% take the baby to the doctor, see what's wrong, see what's going on. To me, this just sounds completely crazy, literally insane. Like, how could you do this? Um, with my diet. So what I've been doing is cutting out soy products, nuts, uh, citrus, and the gluten, and or wheat. So this has actually been a little bit different for me because usually I do have uh, bread, and I usually have like tempeh salads every day and I usually have like lemon and oranges and stuff like that so it's been so it's been a bit of a change Huge. it's actually <laughs> been going pretty well and it's been about two weeks now so what I've been having lately instead of like tempeh and stuff in my salads is just a uh, potato like air fried potato it's super delicious and it makes it more filling as well and then for breakfast I usually have uh, oats or um, like rice cakes with avocado and then for dinner I just have like the usual like rice and quinoa and beans and uh, salad and stuff like that vegetables but it's been a little bit more challenging to go to the restaurant because 
I can't just like pick whatever I want and whatever I feel like but they do still have some some dishes that are soy free and tomato free as a starter I'm having a kale salad so this is just a kale with red pepper and avocado and you know on paper you might look at these foods and say oh there's so many vitamins in them but guys plant forms of vitamins not bioavailable to the human digestive system and yeah super simple but very delicious <laughs> and Noah has been sleeping the whole time and now he woke up <laughs> he wants to join the party so Noah is getting very interested in everything now and he tries to grab everything so now when I hold it on my lap I just need to be careful so he doesn't like grab my plate and throw it off the table right, so I got my main dish now and I saved some salad I wonder why he wants to grab your plate and throw it off the table <laughs> From the starter, and then I'm gonna have some white basmati rice and this lentil dish as well. It's just like black lentils with like a good coconut sauce. All this woman eats is carbs, inflammatory grains, anti nutrients. It's unbelievable, it really is. And this dish is so good. I'm so excited and I'm very hungry. Okay, so we're back home from the restaurant. We were there a while ago, so it's been a, a few hours since then. And I actually forgot to show you my dessert. I think I have some sort of breastfeeding brain or something that I forget to film. <laughs> but I had a mango sorbet, just made from mangoes. And Note she had mango sorbet for dessert at the restaurant. It was super nice. Now I'm actually gonna try out this oatmeal cookie recipe from our food page. Oatmeal cookie recipe, dessert number two. Guys, I I swear to God, these vegans will just, like, they're like kids. And this is what a kid, I swear to God, this is what a kid would eat. Just dessert every single meal. And not only that, she there's another video. And in this video, she's serving her supplements. You know, how she takes, uh, and it's another day of eating. So she takes spirulina, she takes algae oil, she takes uh, B12. But in this video, she has dessert after breakfast. And her breakfast was like a fruit smoothie with oat milk in it. Like this woman is literally addicted to sugar. She's had dessert for breakfast, lunch, and dinner after her meals. How crazy is that? So let, let's kind of go over. Uh, what I'm curious to see is if her teeth look different with such a high anti-nutrient intake over the past few years. Guys, look at this comparison. Are you serious? This was three years ago. Her teeth looked pretty good, right? Maybe it's just the lighting. But she definitely looks healthier three years ago. I don't want to dwell on this picture, but high anti-nutrient content in vegan diets plus high sugar equals poor bone mineral density and very poor dental health, especially with the lack of vitamins. So just uh, bear that in mind. Onto spirulina. And this is a website from Dr. Greger, the vegan overlord, literally saying spirulina is toxic and bad for you. Uh, so even if vegans think spirulina is bad, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, here's something saying that algae oil is very, very unsustainable. And uh, it's very, very high in and can be very high in uh, PCBs. So you know, very, very important to keep in mind the dangers of consuming algae oil from a contamination standpoint, as well as a sustainability standpoint. Uh, production of algae at the scale required for optimal nutrition of the global population is not currently feasible in terms of infrastructure or cost. Not only that, but hexane and other solvents are used to extract algae oil. So not only is this algae oil not good for the environment, it's like pretty much a laboratory poison as a lot of other supplements are. Uh, so all the supplements she's taking, the spirulina, the algae, and then even then the the bioavailability of the B12, you know, I mean, uh, of course there's like seven other B vitamins that are just as important as B12 that she's not apparently supplementing. You know, we went over the anti-nutrients in the oat milk, uh, the indigenous preparations, you know, this is Weston Price, if you guys do want to eat grains. Uh, I do have a video that I'm going to do on sourdough bread soon. And this is something definitely to check out. Avocado is the only really nutritious food. But of course, you know, I mean, places like Kenya literally banned avocado export. Uh, and if we look at the vitamin content of avocado, hey, there's small amounts of vitamin E and vitamin K. Uh, looks pretty good on paper. But again, these are plant forms of the vitamins. And, you know, they're, she's not eating 
like if you were eating four or five avocados and a ton of coconut cream on a vegan diet, we might be having a different conversation, but all these vegans tend to be afraid of fat, the only source of nutrients they might actually be getting on this diet. And then those are, we just go back into the studies so, uh, that I went over earlier. So if you guys do reach out to any vegans or anyone that's posting these breastfeeding videos on YouTube, please just be really positive and go over how they could potentially increase the nutrient content of their diet, maybe through just consuming small amounts of shellfish like bivalves, the the non-sentient, so to speak, mollusks. Maybe you just eat some liver every week. Uh, increase their fat intake, like a lot of coconut cream. Uh, supplement a lot of more fat soluble vitamins, uh, a lot more DHA. Even if the algae oil and the spirulina is killing her, at least maybe it'll get through the breast milk to her baby. So, guys, please support these people in a positive way and try to help them and get them out of this. As as I said earlier, this is something very close to me, and I hate to see uh, the negative effects. I am very fortunate in a sense that I was fed a soy formula, and I still turned out with a pretty good noggin, although my eyebrows and my hair are way too big for my face. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys would like to support me, uh, please just share the video. Uh, check out my website below. I do offer consultations in regards to my four principles of health, diet, exercise, sun, and water. And for you clowns out there, let's do a makeup check. I'm rubbing chemicals on my face from a makeup wipe for you guys. So come on, show me some love. Oh man. Look at all that makeup. You guys, you guys drive me crazy.